Elon Musk just revealed why SpaceX cares about concrete. While there's a good deal of information on how the Starship program, space program of tech giant Musk, has spurred the development of computers, ceramics, and even airplane design, even the noisy engines. Only a handful of people know that there is a link between concrete and space travel, and people usually don't care about the concrete base. Concrete proves to be the foundation of all things society deems important. So it's no surprise that the forward-thinking engineers at SpaceX would become concrete experts. In fact, concrete is so important to the service life of rockets that SpaceX engineers study the effects of corrosion and much more. Piqued any interest? Want to know more about it? Stay tuned in this video and welcome to Elon Musk Rewind. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss an update on SpaceX, Tesla, Starship, or basically anything related to the multi-talented, influential tech icon and billionaire Elon Musk. That being said, let's get started. As we all know, rocket launch pads are subject to conditions that aren't very similar to typical infrastructure. And in November 2020, SpaceX was beginning to advance the test program for its new Starship vehicle, one of the most ambitious rocket projects in history. One of the prototypes, SN8, was on platform to test the engines for the first time as a fully stacked vehicle. As soon as the engine started, it was clear that something was wrong. A shower of sparks exploded in the dark sky and the engine stopped abruptly. Those sparks looked harmless from a distance with no reference for scale, but were actually solid, glowing chunks from the launch pad underneath the rocket. One of these chunks was thrown into the engine compartment, a major cable was cut, and the missile was badly damaged. The event brought the most modest piece of technology in the entire rocket industry to the limelight, and that's the launch pad, and it's more important than you think. There's a lot of creative ways to manage the extremely high temperature exhaust gases barreling out of a rocket engine at incredible speeds during a launch. With the Space Shuttle and the in-progress SLS, the launch facilities incorporate a flame trench that you can see if you watch a launch carefully. This is a structure used to deflect the exhaust gases of a rocket away from the vehicle itself and all the delicate support structures, fuel and power lines, etc. But a launch isn't the only time that rockets and their fiery engines get close to the ground. SpaceX and other launch providers are now landing rockets. And in most cases, the coming down has a lot less precision than the going up. It isn't feasible to pinpoint a rocket landing on top of a little frame diversion structure. At least, not yet. Instead, they usually just land on a slab of concrete. But it's not just regular concrete. The relationship between heat and that omnipresent grey durable substance is pretty complex. Let's just sit down for a moment and let's try to understand the tremendous amount of science that goes behind a material we usually don't care about. So, concrete is a relatively fire-resistant material. That's one of the reasons we use so much of it in our buildings and infrastructure. It doesn't burn, thus it can provide protection like around the stairwells of buildings. Because it is so durable and incombustible, there is a lot of science around the topic of concrete and fire. Engineers have to consider how to design structures that can withstand it. And if a fire has occurred, we need engineers to inspect structures to figure out whether they've been damaged beyond repair or are still safe to use. So yeah. If you ever happen to damage concrete around delicate systems of your house, better get an engineer instead of trying to be one. Damage can be pretty obvious in some cases, but concrete can be damaged in ways that aren't immediately clear to the naked eye. When the damage is obvious, it's probably because of moisture. Concrete is a porous material and it can absorb water from the air, but it's not super porous. After all, we build dams out of concrete. Moisture can take years to set in after it's cured. If the water gets too hot, it can turn to steam, expanding in volume within the interstitial spaces of the concrete. And if that steam can't get out fast enough, it will build up pressure to the point where the concrete breaks. This is known as moisture clogged spalling, because the water in the pores of the concrete blocks the steam from getting out. 
now, how exactly SpaceX engineers cope with it and what's this refractory concrete around Starship launch pads that we need to talk about? Well, refractory concrete isn't a single material, but really a general name for concrete designed to withstand high temperatures. Every manufacturer has their special blend of herbs and spices. Usually, they use cement that includes oxides which absorb heat less readily and have reduced thermal expansion. So, they're less prone to deterioration when subjected to extreme temperatures. But no matter what, even refractory concrete is subject to damage due to heating. That potential for damage is especially present in the case of launch pads, where concrete is not just exposed to heat, but also corrosive gases moving at incredible speeds, and sometimes carrying solid airborne particulates capable of eroding even extremely durable materials. Landing pads are extremely important. Without them, rocket engines cause extensive erosion, blasting the loose soil atop the planet, called regolith, away at incredible speeds. This is one of the reasons the two recent Mars rovers used a complicated sky crane system for landing. The rovers themselves were lowered onto the planet via cables, while the rocket thruster nozzles stayed high above the surface. Once the wheels were safely on the ground, the cables were cut and the crane flew off to crash well away from the rover. It was all to reduce the potential for damage from those rocket engine plumes. In fact, when you land a rocket on the moon, the exhaust gases are moving faster than the planetary escape velocity. That means, not only can the flying dust threaten the vehicle itself, the engines can also send a plume of ejecta flying out like a swarm of microscopic bullets with no atmosphere and not enough gravity to slow them down. If an orbiting spacecraft were to fly through this plume, it would almost certainly be damaged. So, moon landings have to be timed to prevent collisions between orbiting spacecraft and these sheets of ejected regolith. That's a lot of complexity that could be solved with a simple square of concrete. But what seems simple on Earth has some interplanetary complications, one more important than others. Concrete is heavy. That's one of its main features. Concrete structures mostly stay put because their weights pin them to the ground. But that weight is a huge disadvantage if you have to carry the raw materials to another planet. Reducing mass is everything when it comes to launching payloads and the weight of an entire rocket is often less than that of the pad it takes off from. In other words, Elon Musk is bringing concrete launch or launching pad assembly kits to the moon, Mars or elsewhere anytime soon. There are some creative ideas for building launch pads on other planets that take advantage of local materials, just like he's using methane as a fuel to refuel on Mars. And NASA have even made some lunar concrete using samples brought back to Earth. But like almost all tasks that happen outside of Earth's comfort, it's never as easy as it seems at first glance. The stakes are high, as we saw them during the static test of SpaceX's SN8. When a launch or landing pad fails, it can be worse than if it wasn't there at all, creating high-speed projectiles that jeopardize the safety of the vehicle and its support equipment, not to mention its crew. It's a nice reminder that even the humblest provision here on Earth, a solid flat and durable surface, is an absolute luxury on another world and of importance of infrastructure in our interplanetary quests. So folks, this is all for today's video. What do you think about the importance of concrete now? Let us know in the comments below. And most importantly, if you want to be updated on every single topic related to Elon Musk, then you should consider subscribing to the channel and pressing the bell icon. See you in the next one. Until then, peace out.